Hola, soy Daniel Vidal, paleobiólogo de saurópodos. Hola, soy Paco Gasco, paleohistólogo y paleodivulgador. Soy Carlos de Miguel y trabajo con reptiles marinos del Triásico. Y esto es... ¡Dino Masters! Ah, y que sepáis que tenemos un podcast. Pero sí, sí, ya lo saben, que somos todos famosos, Tron. Bueno, hola, estamos en las octavas jornadas internacionales de dinosaurios y su entorno, eh, en Salón de los Infantes, en Burgos. Y hemos venido aquí Paco y yo, y estamos con Steve Brusati, um, de la Universidad de Edimburgo, ¿eh? y autor del libro de Rise and Fall of the Horses, que también ha salido publicado. Thank you very much. Yes, gracias. <laughs> <laughs> for this interview. Um, so, uh, first question. Uh, you've been like working in different uh, dinosaurs in different ages, uh, from Triassic fossils to Cretaceous fossils, different uh, clades of dinosaurs, and we have you have taken part in discoveries of new species. Which one would be your favorite, or one of the discoveries that you keep like a good Um, memory. <laughs> I mean, I think I've been very fortunate to work with lots of people all over the world in so many different countries, and I've been invited to help uh, describe different dinosaurs. I've been part of teams that have discovered different dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> it's hard to to, to pick one. one. I mean, I, I am very proud of the the discoveries we made in Scotland. Uh, my team and I, some of the footprint sites that we've discovered, just because dinosaurs have been so rare in Scotland. But as far as new species of dinosaurs, I think things like uh, Belur from Romania that my colleague Matias Premier found, uh, Jen Wan Long from China, which a farmer found that I was invited to help study, and um, Chongosaurus, the thing we call Pinocchio Rex, the Tyrannosaurus, the long snout, found by a construction worker in China digging uh, for a building. So I, I think those are my, my favorite. Your favorite. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, with our In which uh, field of the dinosaur paleontology are you more focused now at this moment? Yeah, well, I'm actually getting away from dinosaurs a little <laughs> bit. I'm <Okay>. becoming <laughs> more interested in, in what happened after the dinosaurs yeah. died, or the non-bird dinosaurs died. So uh, after the end of the Cretaceous, when the asteroid hit, when all of these ecosystems collapsed and all of these you know, 70% of species died, how did the Earth recover? And how did our ancestors, our mammal ancestors, how did they diversify after the extinction? So I'm doing a lot more work on mammals, but also I'm continuing to work on dinosaurs and particularly in Scotland now. We do a lot of field work uh, on the Isle of Skye, some of the other islands. These are Jurassic dinosaurs. We have footprints, we have bones, we have teeth. There's not a lot of them, but they're so rare that each discovery is important. It's always fun to see what we find. Um, uh, could you uh, tell people uh, what can they expect uh, uh, from your book? Oh, uh, from the book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the book part uh, where we are going some courtesy to, to you. <laughs> Good. I can go into my uh, marketing mode, yeah. I would say. You know what it's like. You write these books and you have to sell these books to people. Um, I had a lot of fun writing the book. I'm also very happy it's been translated into Spanish. Uh, the book is it's for adults. Um, it's not a kid's book. It's not an encyclopedia. It's a, a storybook, really, a, a narrative book, a popular science book. And in, in it, I try to tell the story of the dinosaur. That's what I try to do. I try to make it about them, about you know where dinosaurs came from, how they spread around the world, how they grew to huge sizes, how some of them evolved into birds, how the other ones went extinct. But in telling that story, I try to tell some of my own stories of doing field work and making discoveries and working with a lot of colleagues from around the world. And I think, you know, when you read the book, you'll see there's lots of names of lots of paleontologists in there. A lot of the people that uh, inspire me, a lot of the people that have mentored me, a lot of the people that I've worked with. Uh, so I hope people uh, read the book and get a sense for how paleontologists like us, you know, how we make discoveries, how we study fossils, and also people get a sense for all this new information we know about dinosaurs because we're learning so much so quickly. 
Okay, and last, uh, just a quick question. What kind of advice would you give to someone who wants to become a paleontologist or for they are starting this career? Well, the first thing I would say, uh, come to the University of Edinburgh, study with us. We do have a, a growing program in a beautiful city in a beautiful part of the world in Scotland. We also have a master's course, by the way, in Edinburgh uh, that I run, and we are starting to get a lot of international students. Uh, but before you know, you go into university or master's, um, you know, the, I think the most important thing is to just be curious about the world, to uh, find ways to ask questions about nature, about the earth. Uh, take a lot of science courses, read a lot of books, use the internet to follow the latest discoveries. Go out and find fossils of your own. You know, when I was a teenager and I became interested in paleontology, it was collecting fossils, not dinosaurs, but brachiopods and corals and bryozoans, that sort of stuff. But it was collecting actual fossils, you know, being the first person to find these fossils that were hundreds of millions of years old. That was so cool. And you don't need a degree to do that. You don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to be a professor. You know, anybody can do it. And I think that's one of the best ways uh, to just get excited and enthused about this amazing field that we're a part of. Okay, well, uh, so thank you very much. All right, gracias. Thank you so much. Y nada, nos vemos en el próximo video. Un saludo. Hello.